Yo, then, in this video, I want to talk about why you should wait three years before you start hangboarding. I lied, you, you really shouldn't. You should just start hangboarding immediately as a beginner climber. Uh, mostly for the uh, promotion of getting stronger fingers in an activity where you're constantly holding small edges. I think that's pretty important, as so should you. Now, mayhaps, uh, you will have come to the conclusion that maybe you shouldn't do hangboarding as a beginner because it's dangerous and it's prone to injuries. And to that, I would simply say, no matter what level of climber you are, if you're climbing with the pursuit of becoming better at climbing, the likelihood that you will get injured is probably 100%. And if you climb on a regular basis, say three to four times a week, the likelihood that you are already injured via climbing or you will get injured via climbing is like 100%. Therefore, when it comes to these injuries, I think we should view it more as a par for the course. While it may not be the best par for the course, it is indeed just par for the course. So I'll simply just like to uh, switch the uh, direction. Instead of being scared of hangboarding as a beginner, you should look at it as a training tool to make sure your fingers are stronger. Therefore, you could just climb better because this is now the field of the world that we live in. And without any particularly further ado, let's just hop into hangboarding. Alrighty, let's quickly talk about the two types of hangboards that exist in the world. The first one is a plastic type of hangboard. They're pretty good for conditioning your skin for outdoor climbing. Uh, I'm, I don't really like these. The ones I do prefer are these wooden ones. Now the wooden hangboards are good because they're really friendly for your skin. Now when it comes to understanding how to read these hangboards in terms of grip variety and grip choosing, most hangboards out there are asymmetrical, meaning that the 15 millimeter edge and the other 15 millimeter edge are not directly in the center of the hangboard. Likewise, the 30 millimeter edge and the 30 millimeter edge are not in the center of the hang board. So they're slightly asymmetrical. So don't make the mistake of grabbing in this and grabbing this and assuming that both these edge sizes here are gonna be the same, they will not be. But other hang boards like the Beastmaker are symmetrical, whereas both the outside edge are the same depth. The monos are the same, those are the same, those are the same, those are the same, and obviously the center rung is the same. So just be careful when it comes to holding your hose properly. Now when you hang board, there's gonna be one edge size that you use and it's called the 20 millimeter crimp. I mean, 20 millimeter edge. The reason why we use the 20 millimeter edge as opposed to other ones is because 20 millimeter is just roughly big enough to the point where it can handle about one pad's uh, length of register, which makes it a really good edge size for training on and uh, it's pretty industry standard. Now, when it comes to which grip variety you should use, you should use open hand, half crimp, or full crimp. And the answer here is you're gonna have two options. Option one is gonna be open hand, or option two is gonna be the half crimp. Go with whichever grip position you are more comfortable in. We're gonna stick with that one grip positioning because as someone who's just starting to learn how to hangboard, there's no need for you to be super fancy doing all these extra hand positioning. At the end of the day, it's the basics that's the most important. That's what we're trying to build up right now. In this case, the basic is gonna be one hand positioning, open hand or half crimp, your preferred choice. Choose it, stick with it. And now I guess it's time we should start training. Now I will break this down to three levels of hanging. Uh, one, level one is if you can't even leave the ground off 20 millimeters. Level two, if you could leave the ground for five seconds. And level three, if you could leave the ground for 10 seconds. So if you're in the level one category where you can't even get your body weight to leave the ground, here's what your hangboard workout's gonna look like. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna grab these things because I'm lazy at the moment, but you'll be holding on to 20 millimeters. You're gonna start off with three sets of 10 second hangs with assistance via your feet. You have your feet placing on the ground, slightly in front of you. You could do it kind of like a chair or you could do it with your feet slightly dragging behind you like this. Whatever it is, you're gonna try to focus most of your weight into your fingers, obviously, and hang for a count of 10 seconds. After those 10 seconds are up, you're gonna rest for two minutes and repeat that three times. You're gonna follow that up with four sets of five jumps. Basically, you're just gonna hold the 20 millimeter edge and you're just gonna jump up, down, up, down, up, down. And when you jump up, it doesn't need to be an excellently high jump, just enough so that your fingers get a little bit of catch on it. And then you try to hold yourself in that up position using that upwards momentum for as long as you can. Typically speaking, it should look something like <laughs> something of that nature. You're gonna do that five times for four sets and you're gonna rest two minutes. 
per set. And in case you're wondering why you're over here doing these uh, jumps onto 20 mil, it's just so that you could get used to the feeling of your entire body weight leaving the ground and being only supported by your hands even though momentum is with you. Now after you're done jumping, you're just gonna go back to some normal basic hinge. You're gonna finish off with two sets of 10 seconds assisted hangs again and then that would be your workout now you'll be ready to move on to level two once you're able to hang off the 20 millimeter edge for five seconds without your feet touching the ground level two is for people who can only hold it for five seconds with their feet off the ground off 20 millimeter edge here's your workout you're gonna do four sets of three second hangs with your feet off the ground one two, three, immediately place your feet on the ground and then hold it for an additional seven seconds for a total of 10 seconds. Since your max hang is only five seconds, we're gonna make sure you're able to hang with your body weight 100% of the time, thus three seconds. So, right, you're hanging one, two, three. Now we're gonna want to get a little bit uh, extra hanging into you, but without completely wrecking your fingers, hence, feet back onto the ground for the last seven seconds and we're just building up that volume and integrity in your fingers with lighter loads but while allowing you to be intense in that first three seconds now you're going to do four sets of that shenanigan with like a three minutes rest per set afterwards your fingers should feel a little bit more warmed up and now you're ready to go uh pretty much balls to the wall you're going to do five sets of five second hangs and you're just basically gonna hang for five seconds, one, two, three, four, five. Rest two minutes and repeat that for a total of five sets. You're gonna put in 25 seconds worth of work and that right there should get your fingers feeling relatively good. Now you're ready to move on to level three. If you're able to hang for 10 seconds without your feet touching the ground. Now level three is if you're able to hold the hang board for 10 seconds without your feet uh, making contact with the ground. And the workout is relatively simple. It's just six sets of 10 second hangs with a three minutes rest per set. Now you pass this level if you're able to hang without your feet touching the ground for a total of 20 seconds, at which point in time you're ready to move on to bigger and better things. Now there is an ongoing debate on whether you should hang board at the start, in the middle, or at the end of your climbing session. And as a human being who has done it for all three in a very intense, <laughs> max weighted hang type of style i'm here to tell you makes absolutely no difference in terms of results as far as i'm concerned anecdotally and i've yet to see any great solid evidence or research to state otherwise but i will say one thing if you are to do your hangboarding before you start your climbing session it will make your fingers feel really nice and recruited so that is the one difference i do notice if i do my hangboarding session first and then i climb afterwards but in essence you should just do it how you want if i was to recommend a time frame i would say to do it first just so you can get it over with and in terms of frequency how often you should do these uh light hangboarding sessions because they are indeed very light hangboarding sessions you should do them every single time you climb every single time if you climb three to four times a week you should do it three to four times a week if you climb twice a week you should do it twice a week again because they're so uh light in intensity and you're able to control the intensity of your feet on the ground uh it should be relatively safe no matter how tired or excellent you feel that day so all that being said if you want to enhance your climbing capabilities as a beginner and you're just starting just start hangboarding right away it's phenomenal it's like working out why wouldn't you want to work out right away if you want to become a more stronger human being anyways not my most organized video but uh thanks for watching and i'll see you next time partner